So hello, welcome to the video and welcome to Boston. I've been here for a couple of days now and I've had a great time but it's time to move on and in about an hour I'll be travelling to Boston's Logan Airport and flying all the way across the country to Los Angeles and I'll be flying on JetBlue in their premium cabin. Now a lot of American Airlines describe their premium cabin as first class even if quite obviously it isn't but JetBlue does things a little differently and they describe their premium cabin as mint. Now there's a couple of different varieties of mint. One I'm traveling on today is the older style where the seats still are lie flat and there's plenty of space and it's often described as the throne variant whereas the planes that fly across the Atlantic these days have a slightly newer iteration of it but even so it should still be a pretty good experience that I'm really looking forward to. So if you'd like to see what JetBlue's service across America from corner to corner looks like in their premium cabin then stick around. Hi, I'm Matt. Over the last 25 years, I've traveled a lot. I've lived in five countries on four continents. I've flown over 1.3 million miles. I've visited over 100 countries, every American state, but I'm nowhere near done. So subscribe to the channel so you can come with me. I decided to take public transport to the airport for four reasons. It's simple, quick, cheap, plus there were roadworks that weekend which closed one of Boston's epic tunnels which made traffic go a bit bonkers. Boston's subway system is pretty good. A flat $2.40 covers a single trip and it was five stops to the airport station. Once there, you need to change to a free bus, which is only a short walk but the wait may not be super pleasant in the winter. The bus runs a loop from the terminals to the subway to the car rental centre and back to the terminals so it was really busy when I got on. Everyone then got off at the rental car centre and it was a quick hop to Terminal C on an almost completely empty bus. I'm sure I could easily have used a kiosk to check in. And I'm also sure, from the lack of desks in the check-in zone, that that's what JetBlue wants you to do. But I wanted to see what the service was like and found the one Mint check-in desk hidden away in a corner. The group in front of me were depositing an unaccompanied minor into JetBlue's custody, which seems to be a phenomenally complicated and paperwork intensive process, which took a while. But it gave me time to come up with an icebreaker. One unaccompanied adult to Los Angeles, please. <laughs> which I think worked pretty well. A quick and easy process once it was my turn, uh, but I probably should have used a kiosk. And then off to the security line. JetBlue provides fast track access to Mint customers, although the checkpoint was deserted when I passed through. JetBlue is the seventh biggest carrier in the US that blends a low cost experience in coach class behind the curtain with a far more premium experience in front of the curtain in business, sorry, Mint class. Mint has been designed to be different from the competition, albeit still at a reasonable price. But, and it's a fairly big but, JetBlue doesn't operate their own lounges. And as they aren't in any of the global alliances, there's no access available to partner lounges. So no lounge access for business customers. There's some chatter that they may offer lounges in the future, particularly as they've recently started flying across the Atlantic and the absence of lounges is a huge competitive disadvantage when attracting international business travellers, but there was nothing when I travelled. Terminal C does offer a lounge, innovatively called The Lounge, which is accessible with a priority pass. I'm keeping track of the number of times since I started my channel that I would have used Priority Pass if I had it, and this took me to a total of uh, one. Still not a strong business case for signing up. So I settled in as close to the lounge as I could get and got some editing done. Off to the gate, and although you couldn't really see our plane, it was fun to see a float plane taking off. Boarding was briefly delayed, but Mint customers were quickly called forward and we headed for our plane. An Airbus A321 delivered new to JetBlue five and a half years ago. On through door one, which forces you to turn right into the business, sorry, Mint cabin. An alternating 2211 configuration 
with the single seats nesting between the double seats in front and behind, hence the nickname of a throne seat. This is the same configuration used by TAP Air Portugal and Air Lingus, who are the two other airlines currently using narrowbody jets across the Atlantic. A bit of rain to mark our departure from Boston. A bedding kit was provided even though it was a daytime flight. There's a large TV in front of you, beneath which is the foot cubby, which sits under the armrests of the seat in front, allowing a flatbed to be created. On both sides of the single seat are wide armrests, under which go the feet of the passengers behind you. To the right was an amenity kit and headphones, behind which was a really large cupboard and a couple of smaller storage pockets. A plug socket, water slot and light. Some upper body flexibility is required to access all of this, but the seat width is used well. Seat controls are also to your right. An interesting massage option was advertised, along with a TV remote. That TV offers a wide range of TV channels, which is more and more common amongst US airlines, but is quite a novelty to Europeans. Plus a strong range of movies and TV options, as well as radio channels and a moving map. It's a very good entertainment system, but being really critical, the screen definition wasn't brilliant and the touchscreen was a little clunky. Beneath the screen is yet another storage pouch and there was another one lower down. Above you is a reading light and a personal air vent. To your left is basically just a surface, although there are two USB ports behind you and there is space underneath to squeeze your shoes into if needed. The amenity kit is, well it's a little quirky. I really must learn that I can't empty these things one handed. Never seen lozenges offered in an amenity kit before. Socks but no face mask or earplugs, plus a coconut wipe, a collagen dietary supplement face mist and lip balm. I think quirky is the right word, or perhaps I'm just getting old. And the menu, personalised by the crew, which is a simple but very nice touch. The service started with a PDB or pre-departure beverage, a domestic flight so the drinks cabinet wasn't locked and you could have anything from the menu. I went for the closest they had to a champagne, which was a sparkling Sauvignon Blanc. Served in a plastic glass, I couldn't tell if that was a pre-departure necessity or whether it was the result of stinginess or a consequence of the you-know-what. But it was very refreshing. I was beginning to quite like Jet Blue, and when I saw this painted on the next door plane, I decided that I was really going to like them. The design of the single seats means there's quite a lot of barriers around your seat, not sure what that roll of paper was doing. There's no door to the seat, but it's still pretty private in one of these throne seats. So we took off towards the south, turning east away from the city. We flew over Fort Independence, which is quite topical as I was travelling on the 3rd of July. It wasn't a problem, but I was quite prepared to present myself as Australian rather than British given the events being celebrated the next day, particularly in that corner of the USA. It had been 30 years since I'd visited Boston and I really enjoyed my short time there. I'm sure I'll be back before another 30 years has passed. JetBlue isn't the most widely known airline outside the USA. A quick Google suggests that they operate about a thousand flights a day, which is quite a few more than SAS or Emirates, and it's probably not that far off the number operated by BA. So in global terms, it's a decent sized airline, even if it only has a 5% market share of the huge US market. Overhead Salem as we crossed the US coast, heading west. The seatbelt sign went off, so it was time to play with the seat. I tried the massage function and couldn't really detect anything happening to be frank, but the footwell light does work if your feet prefer to be in darkness when they rest. The tray table is also a little quirky. I'm going to have to hit the thesaurus for alternative words for quirky as this review progresses. 
It creeps up on you from beside you on the right. It slides out, then pivots down, before swivelling around into its final position. The design of the seat drives the need for extravagant articulation, and as the mechanism is between you and the aisle, it means that you can't exit the seat with the table deployed. A drinks round was offered and I went for the mint condition cocktail with Bombay Sapphire Gin, which I really liked, although there are very few cocktails I don't like. It was served with some breadsticks. Perhaps bread twigs is a better description. I believe grassini is the correct terminology. Something a bit uh, ooh, um, unusual from JetBlue here, but very tasty nevertheless. The table was laid ahead of dinner. I guess you'd call that laid. A qu uh, no, unconventional approach to dinner is taken. Five options are offered from which you can pick three. I went for the salad, the lamb ragu and the roasted chicken. All were delicious. It was served with some bread which could be paired with a DIY dip made from oil, chilli and salt. Balsamic vinegar is more commonly deployed with the oil for bread dipping purposes but the chilli really worked. It was, um, well I'm, I'm going to go with out of the ordinary. Overall it was really good and I accompanied it with a glass of Napa Valley Cabernet. I hadn't thought I was that hungry but it was all comfortably dispatched. But I managed to still find room for a vanilla gelato which was probably the most traditional element of the entire service offering. After the meal was cleared I tried out the seat in bed mode. A single button transition into the flat position. The foot cubby was long enough for me, I'm six foot four although there was limited width and height and it's actually more of a foot tunnel than a cubby so the width is restricted up to your thighs. Nevertheless the seat's design offers a really good bed for a narrow body business class seat. The seat felt private when flat although you're obviously much closer to your neighbour if you're sitting in a double row which may be less relaxing if you're seated next to a stranger. A friend of mine, Glasgow Flyer, flew mint class overnight the other way from San Francisco to New York, actually in the same seat. So check out his review for what the overnight sleeping experience is like in this cabin. The link is in the description below. So as fantastic as JetBlue has made the business, sorry, mint class seat, they can't magic any extra space into the A321 toilets. Nice and clean though. The six hour flight passed really quickly and before long we were descending into Los Angeles. There was no second service before arrival but we did receive a parting gift of chocolate covered cashews wrapped in a lovely handwritten note from the cabin crew. A really nice touch although I think it was a vegan which means there was no dairy in the chocolate so the flavour was a little, ooh, uh, let's go with left field this time. I really enjoyed the jet blue mint experience. The seat was great, the food was great and the crew was very friendly and engaging too. It's a step below the leading international business class experiences but it's very competitive in the US domestic market where business class standards are generally a bit patchy. JetBlue tries really, really hard to be different, and they succeed. Not everything they do differently hits the bullseye. Even though I joke about it, there is quite a lot of quirkiness involved, but I hugely respect them for working hard to differentiate the experience. It's a memorable way to go from coast to coast within the US. I mentioned that they also now fly to Europe, which they also operate with an A321, albeit one with an enhanced mint offering even better than the configuration I enjoyed. But that lack of lounges is going to be a problem for them as they try to win business from full service international airlines that have lounges as well as membership of international alliances. I paid £732 for this one way flight, which was quite a lot. It was the 4th of July weekend so there was no redemption availability and cash fares were high across the board. This flight in the mint cabin was being sold for a relatively small premium over economy class which I used as justification for paying this much. 
This route can regularly be found for £620 with a few months advance notice. Even though they're not in an alliance, JetBlue does have a partnership with Qatar Airways though, through which you can earn avios. I will earn three and a bit thousand avios for this flight, although they haven't credited automatically and Qatar does not make it easy to change missed postings, but I will get them eventually. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please give this video a like if you did. Please subscribe if you're new and please leave me a comment. Have you flown JetBlue? Would you consider them having watched this? And finally, if you'd like to support what I'm doing here more directly, I have a Patreon account, the link to which is in the description below. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.